this is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. Please hit that like button right out of the gate. I would really appreciate it. A lot of you forget to hit the like button. And I know you love the video, so if you could just do that right away, that'd be great. Also, if you could share the video and subscribe, and when you subscribe, hit the notification bell and all videos. Today's video is regarding if the crime in the Madeline Soto case of her death was that spontaneous uh, was it something that he that uh, Stephen Stearns planned or was it just something that happened randomly at the time there are arguments to be made for both sides now one thing I wanted to perhaps change from the video that I put out yesterday if you remember the uh, officer explained that they were looking for a car pulled over that had a flat tire and this is before they found Madeline's body. They already had arrested Stephen Stearns. But they mentioned uh, Highway 192 and Old Hickory Tree Road. And then also Nolte and Old Hickory Tree Road. And here's a screenshot of the person who actually saw the car pulled over with a flat tire. And this is Thomas Karras. He said, I gave the pictures to Osceola County law enforcement as they started their search and they found her where I saw him. So when she was eventually found, where he reported that he saw Stearns pulled over with a flat tire, it's exactly where she was found. So Crimeline told me I did not have enough information, but Osceola law enforcement jumped right into action. Thank God for them. Um, I saw him around 1.20 p.m. Monday on Old Hickory Tree pullover on a roundabout that has a cargo shipping container. He was in the right-hand side heading towards Harmony. He was wearing a green, light brown uh, hat backwards. I didn't see anyone else in the vehicle. He was, out he was outside the car at the back left tire with a tire iron looking like he was changing it but couldn't say for sure. All right, so what he's explaining is he's calling Hickory Tree Road, Old Hickory Tree Road, and maybe that's what they all do. All right, and Harmony is right over here, and he said it was heading this direction, and he, all, he said near a, uh, I think he, what the term he used was boxcar. Let's see, what did he say? And it says right here he was next to a cargo shipping container. And if you look, if you go down to Street View, there's the cargo shipping container. Uh, if you go down to the Street View right here, that was actually the map. And you look out there, there it is right there. And he said he was pulled over in this area, standing on the back left. And the car was facing that direction because Harmony is over there. And if you remember, on my other video, her body was found right in this location right there. Obviously, he didn't carry her body from here and walk a half mile carrying her all the way to those woods over there. So again, that helps validate the location that I discovered using the helicopter footage that she was found, uh, I would actually say right inside like that, okay? All right, now what I believe then is that when the officer was talking in the press conference that she actually meant from here, which is Highway 192 and Hickory Tree Road, but maybe they were calling it Old Hickory Tree Road because that's exactly what this witness uh, referred to it as. And then we can go up to here and say Hickory Tree Road and Nolte. And doesn't it make more sense that all along here on Hickory Tree Road is where they want people that saw a vehicle to come forward and let them know what they saw and then right here to 192. So I think that is the, what law enforcement was trying to say, but if you went with what they said exactly, it's unfortunate that we have to, we're left up to interpreting something like that. But they mentioned from here to here, and that just didn't make sense. And now if you go by 192 and Hickory Road and Hickory Road and Nolte right there, that makes a hell of a lot of sense and I believe that is what they were, were referring to. All right, now let's talk about the, you know, was the crime spontaneous or was the crime something that was planned out and plotted for a long time? 
Let's start off by playing the press conference to get the factual information and timing of that day. Last night, detectives from the Kissimmee Police Department met with Madeline's mother and they had to tell her the very devastating news that although we have not found Madeline, uh, we are now confident that she is dead. So remember, this is prior to Madeline Soto being found. Our detectives have determined that Madeline was never dropped off on the morning of February 26th near her school. We believe she was already dead at the time and that Stephen Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. We have video evidence. So what they're saying is, is that she never was dropped off and they believe she was already dead at that time. And so that shows Stephen Stearns discarding items in a dumpster in that apartment complex in Kissimmee at 735 so he's throwing away the laptop and backpack on the day that she goes missing, when she was supposed to be going to school, and uh, in his own apartment complex, or their apartment complex, and, you know, he's throwing them in right there. So does that sound like something, if you were planning a homicide that you would do? I mean, it almost seems ludicrous to put those items in a dumpster in that apartment complex. Perhaps Stefan was aware of when garbage gets picked up. Uh, I guess we don't really know the answer to why, but that seems like a, uh, like a hurried decision. On Monday, February 26, detectives later recovered Madeline's backpack and her school-issued laptop from that dumpster. At 8.19, we have evidence that shows Stefan Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was visible in that vehicle. We believe she was already dead at that time. Yes, let's play this part again over here. Just later recovered Madeline's backpack and her school issued laptop from that dumpster. Do you think that Madeline was alive or already dead when he threw those items in that dumpster? If you think that she was already dead, then we have to look again, as I repeatedly say, that Jen's comment about seeing her at 8 in the morning getting ready uh, isn't true, but perhaps that was something that uh, Stefan fed her to say after the fact when he realized that they're going to ask all these questions. You were still asleep, but could you tell me that you, you at least saw her? Because I'm the one that took her to school. You know, it's, it's not my fault. You know how it probably went. At 8.19... We have evidence that shows Stephen Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was visible in that vehicle. We believe she was already dead at that time. So what do you guys think of that part? Doesn't that seem ludicrous for somebody to plan out a homicide and then be coming back with a body in the vehicle? Was he, did he prop her up in the car? and drive around and make it seem like she was alive. And, but then why come back to the apartment complex with her in it when you are claiming you dropped her off at school? Those two things don't work uh, together. So that also seems absolutely uh, poorly planned, something totally irrational. It's, it's our belief that she was killed in Kissimmee. Now, if you notice what he says right there, it's our belief she was killed in Kissimmee. That means their belief right there is that somebody killed her. He doesn't say, we believe she died in Kissimmee. He said, we believe she was killed. So this is before they found the body. And, and that he moved her body. And so that's why the Kissimmee Police Department is the lead investiga investigators now. As for messages that, uh, that is correct. It is transition to a homicide investigation and the Kissimmee Police Department will be so it's a homicide. They're investigating it as a homicide, though, before they found her. And then we know that she was found right here a day or two later, a few days later, right there. And after they uh, found her, we haven't heard what the, the cause of death was. You know, they almost are referring to it as a homicide, in the press conference here, you know, she was killed, etc. 
So that would be a homicide, but they wouldn't really know at that point uh, until they do the autopsy. However, I think it's likely it's a homicide. Was it an intentional homicide, though? And there's just a lot of really interesting uh, elements of this case that don't really add up to somebody planning, and then there's things that you might think he did plan. For example, look at this right here. This is in the arrest warrant. Digitally appears the affiant Detective Brian Moore, a sworn law enforcement officer to wit, an officer for the Kissimmee Police Department, who makes this affidavit and states under oath that affiant has probable cause to believe that certain laws have been violated in Osceola County, Florida, and that on between March 20th, 2022, which is a month after her birthday in 2022, and then all the way to December 3rd of 2023, the defendant, Stephen Michael Stearns, did violate Florida state statutes and committed the offenses. And we've seen all of the um, assaults that uh, they are referring to using video, et cetera, et cetera, in the arrest warrant. Now, look at those dates. I find these dates interesting. Look at how it says on 3-20-2022, that is about one month after her birthday in 2022. So she's probably 11 at that time. And we have on December 3rd, 2023, the ending of the information that they found. And that is really quite interesting when you think that that is just almost three months to the day when they found her body. And remember, he had moved out three months prior. So is this an assault that happened just before he moved out? And if so, is, it, is that why he moved out? Was Jen aware of something and kicked him out? Or did he leave for some other reason? And maybe he was just going to leave, but then he heard from Madeline, because you remember he would text message Madeline quite a bit. And maybe she told him something. I mean, I had a theory, and there's no evidence whatsoever to point to it, that maybe she was pregnant and let him know, and then he came back for her birthday, and perhaps he planned to uh, kill her at that point because he was you know, scared that she would tell somebody. Because once she's pregnant, he has no out. I mean, the mother would say, well, how did you get pregnant? Then she would answer. You take her to the doctor. They probably have to fill out a report uh, that she got pregnant, etc., etc., and the jig would be up with Stefan Stearns. So in that scenario, he likely would want to have killed her because he had no out. And, you know, three months is about the time where someone starts showing. There's people out there that believe that they think she looks pregnant. And again, there's absolutely no evidence that she is pregnant. Um, it's just one of those things that explains why something changed. Because he obviously, he'd been with Jen for around eight years. And he obviously was assaulting Madeline for quite a few years in there. And what changed right then? What was the element that changed? Something dramatic happened where he felt like he wouldn't be able to control the situation. And that's one uh, theory that would explain that. But all of the other elements seem so discombobulated, like they're just out of control, almost, uh, it doesn't make sense. You know, he, he has a story that he dropped her off at the church and then he drove back to, you know, he took her from home, dropped her off at the church, and then he left to do some errands and then something happened to her. But we already know that you're driving around with her in the vehicle prior coming back to your apartment with her in it and law enforcement believes she's not alive. So he's telling a story for Jen to say and she wants to believe him and believes him because uh, she probably can't imagine that he would be part of her actually being missing. Maybe she was naive to the entire thing. He, uh, Stearns may have picked Jen for a particular reason. Perhaps she doesn't, you know, she has apparently some issues uh, mentally with uh, bipolar and medications she's on and maybe he thought he could control the situation but things were getting out of control and he shows up for the birthday if you remember in the 
interview with him, he was talking about, oh, yeah, they were so happy. To, uh, we were all together. Everybody was so happy. And is that really the truth? Was Madeline really happy to see the abuser show back up again? I doubt it. And then you've got, at 7.35, he's throwing the backpack laptop in a garbage. And then somehow, he must have left with Madeline prior to that, even before the 7.30, and take, taken her somewhere, even before 7.35, taken her somewhere, and then came back, threw the items in a dumpster, and then it almost like he left again to go get her. Or was she in the vehicle at 7.35 when he threw items in the dumpster and then he continued out and for some unknown reason brought her back? See, that sounds like somebody that doesn't have things planned out. And then hours later, since law enforcement believes he wasn't alive at 8.19 and the witness saw him parked there at 1.20, that means for five hours her body was somewhere else, probably four hours at the apartment complex because it takes 40-something minutes to drive out here. So he had her body at the apartment complex since he was returning at 819 with her body in it. And then later he took off and drove all the way out to this area here on Hickory Tree Road, parked. And when the coast was clear, he came over here and he put her body in these woods here. He obviously at that point with the flat tire couldn't go all the way over here, you know, and carry her because somebody would have noticed from a distance when a car drove by. They would see him walking in that field over there. You know, it also doesn't seem like he took a lot of care not to be seen on cameras. And it's just the whole story fell apart right from the beginning. It's, you know, obviously he made up the story, but it doesn't seem like it was planned. I think it's very possible that, you know, he was drugging her over the years. We were talking about that on my show the other night. And perhaps the drug killed her, so that still means it's a homicide. And it was likely a felony murder at that point. Are the text messages and communications she had where she said that she wanted to live in the woods, is that something that Stephen Stearns put on her social media? Or is that something that Madeline herself actually wrote? Because it's interesting that she's found, looks like he may have wanted to take her to the woods, but wasn't able to because of his flat tire. One of the things I've been thinking about is, you know, was she killed manually? Uh, we know that the autopsy reports aren't back yet, and they still haven't given us a, uh, a manner of death or even a cause of death. We heard in the press conference that they thought it was a homicide, but we don't know yet because the autopsy reports aren't in. Uh, one thing I think is interesting, I think that if they immediately could see ligature marks or let's just say a gunshot wound or something like that, they would have came forward, it seems like almost immediately, and charged him with murder. But then maybe they couldn't determine who is the person who killed her because let's say it is strangulation or she was smothered, something like that. He could argue that she did it and he was just covering up for her. So you, there's no proof of which person did it. I think that he's solely responsible and that Jen likely has no knowledge and was just helping tell the story that he told, and, but perhaps when she said that she saw him getting ready at 8 in the morning, that's a little extra there because that's offering proof of life when you really didn't have any if you're just repeating what Stefan told you to say. Yeah, so we don't know right now if law enforcement is waiting for the toxicology reports to see if there's anything else to add in there. It, it is possible that they were able to notice how she died at the crime scene, but they just can't tell who did it based on the circumstances. But it could also be that she had no visible marks and the toxicology report is what will tell them. And then if it turns out that she died of some drugs, then they'll have to figure out how that happened and how that led to their death. And then that would mean that Stephen Stearns was covering up the death somehow. 
But the thing is, when you add in that he has CSAM material on his phone regarding Madeline Soto, and that he is the one seen driving around, putting her items into a dumpster, driving back with her body at 819, the dumpster was 735, and then coming up with this whole story that was absolutely false, it would appear that Stephen Stearns is involved in how she died as well. So uh, leave uh, your comments in the comments section. Let me know what you think, uh, what your thoughts are. And I'm going to uh, look into the Sebastian Rogers case. They have some crazy grainy footage. I'd like to have the original footage because the versions that are out there are so poor that you really can't even tell where you're looking or any discernible landmarks or anything. There's these little white dots moving around. All right. So again, leave your comments in the comments section. I would really appreciate it. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you all very much for watching. Hit that like, share, and subscribe. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. Oh,